Welcome to the Jag War Podcast, a show where we discuss all things related to Duval County's finest NFL football team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Duval, baby! Hey, hey, everybody, it's Andrew with another episode of the Jaguar podcast. My guest for this discussion is Jaguars linebacker Shaq Quarterman. Shaq Quarterman was drafted in 2020 by the Jacksonville Jaguars in the fourth round out of the University of Miami. During his college career at Miami, he amassed 182 solo tackles, 12 sacks, one interception, and five fumble recoveries. You can follow Shaq on Twitter. His Twitter handle is at OG Booby underscore Shaq. I had a really awesome time chatting with Shaq. He's a great guy, really enjoyed it, and I hope you do as well. Here's my discussion with the great Shaq Quarterman. All right, we got Shaq Quarterman, linebacker for the Jacksonville Jaguars, on the podcast. Shaq, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Really appreciate it. I appreciate you for having me, man. No problem, no problem. So, uh, Shaq, you were drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2020 in the fourth round. Um, Tell me a little bit about what was your initial reaction when you got the news that you got drafted? My initial reaction, I really had to drop down and and thank God. And it's two initial reactions, to be honest, because when I got the call, when I got the call on the phone, my parents had no idea who it was. And then by the time I hung up the call, I couldn't even tell them before my name was flashing across the screen next. So, you know, the first thing I did, I, I got on my knees and thank God, you know, just for the opportunity for bringing me such a long way. And then uh, after that, I thank them again because how many players get to play in their own backyard you know it's a crazy percentage that you know of the people that get to make it to the league and even it's even a a crazier percentage that get to play for the home team yeah I saw your your reaction video on YouTube and uh it was great man it must have been great just to be there uh with your family celebrating that for sure you know I had a couple people come up a small small a group of, uh, of people, just my media, but it was this is something I'll never forget. Yeah, um, you and I, Shaq, share uh, something in common. We're both uh, well. You you've lived in Orange Park, Florida, and I have as well. Um, For sure. Then you go to the University of Miami. You play football there, and then you get drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you play pro ball in your in your hometown. That's got to be kind of one uh, rare and two crazy. Yes, to say the least. To say the least. It's unheard of, man. And and even in this draft or the draft that I was in, I think it was only a couple, one or two other players I can remember that did the same thing. And it's just, it's just, it almost makes you feel like the stars are aligning, you know, special things in play, you know, whatever, you know, higher power somebody believes in, you got to say, you know, things, uh, everything happens for a reason. So, I'm just, I was so happy, man. And I'm still happy right now to be able to play in front of my friends and family, old coaches, old fans that's been following me since middle school. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy to behold. Yeah, man. We're happy to have you too. Um, You know, you, you go to Miami, you play for coach uh, Manny Diaz. Uh, You know, I think initially he was your uh, defensive coordinator and then your, your linebackers coach. And then he became the, the head coach in 2019. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what it was like to play for Coach Diaz? Uh, playing for Coach Diaz, I loved it, man. The first word I would say was accountability. From the second I stepped on campus, you know, uh, coaching change, you know, not the original staff I was recruited by. Um, it went off without a cinch, man. He was such a great, a great coach and still is a great coach, you know, just off the sheer care and accountability, you know. Um, he showed his love through all types of tough love, and I love that. It made me into the player that I am, you know, putting a lot on me as a freshman and really telling me, like, you know, I see potential in you, but it's not enough just to have potential. You know, I need you to, you know, command the locker room, command the defense, because this is your defense, you know. And that was probably after my first to second week on campus, you know. So he really pushed me, and I loved that, and I loved that. 
Well, it must've been really cool to, you probably got to know him real well because he was your linebackers coach and you know, you being a exactly. linebacker and then he, he came back to become the head coach. So that must've been really cool. Exactly. I was so happy for him. You know, if anybody deserved it, it was definitely him, just his tenacity and the way that he coaches, you know, I haven't met many people that want to win more than him. And I love that, man. If he gets onto you, you know, like how a lot of coaches do, and it's, and it's not in the nicest way of how some, some people may say, man, it's because he wants to win that bad. He wants you to perfect your technique to the point where, you know, you're in a winning position every play. Yeah. And he does it with a with, with aggression, and I love it. Yeah. I really do. He's definitely really passionate. Um, a lot of people say he's the mastermind behind the infamous uh, turnover chain, the uh, the gold chain that has uh, Miami zip code three hundred five, and then the right. uh, the the mascot on it. Um, where, did you feel privileged to get to wear that chain? Of course, it's the best incentive in college football, <laughs> and we've seen it time and every year. When everybody tried to copy it with backpacks and even trash cans, and <laughs> it's the best incentive, and then and there's nowhere else better for it than Miami, Florida, man. I've gotten to wear it a couple of times. You have, have to. Yeah. How can you play defense for the for the U and not put on that chain? Oh, <laughs> were there any special rules around it? Did, did did any of the players get to keep it for a day if they had a good game? Or no, no matter how good of a game, that's what made it so special. You 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 know how to perfect your technique or or just be playing to the point that you are able to achieve that you got the picks and you got the ball and you get you put that chain on until you go in for the next drive go do it again get the chain again you know that's why i say it is it was a really great and still is a great incentive you know nice um you know a couple of your teammates got drafted the same in the same draft as you um you know, and one of them, I believe Jonathan Garvin, he plays for the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. And, um, le you know, last season we played the Packers. So I was just kind of curious, did you get a chance to talk to him, kind of catch up? No, I didn't even get a chance to talk with him that game, man. I, I, I missed him that time. But, um, yeah, I didn't get a chance to see him. Have you, have you gotten a chance to kind of uh, stay in touch or, or catch up with, like, Coach Diaz or, or any of your former teammates? Yeah, for sure. You have to, man. You know, I just got off the phone with DJ Dallas yesterday. Okay. So uh, we definitely try to keep in contact, you know. And if we don't, you know, just through, you know, uh, being busy in this league and staying active, you know, we always find time to just the even if it's just the update, you know, how you doing, what it's looking like, yeah. you know, all types of from jokes back in the day. Yeah, you got to do it, man. Got to stay in touch and stay sane throughout this uh, crazy pandemic. <laughs> but um so I want to talk a little, uh, little Jags uh, football here. Um, so, you know, obviously it's been a little bit of a weird off season, still going through the pandemic. Um, so I'm sure stuff is, is still kind of remote. Um, you know, you have a new uh, coaching staff coming in. Um, I was just kind of curious, did you have a chance to kind of catch up with uh, coach Cullen or um, coach strong? Yes, for sure. I've talked to coach strong a couple of times since he's a, um you know, officially gotten the job. And we really catched up on, you know, he gave me my first college offering um, when I was in high school when he was at Louisville at the time. Oh, wow. So, you know, he went on to say that, you know, he's been he's been known what type of player I could be. And it's, it's just crazy how God works, you know, in mysterious ways and all of that. So he just raised about how he's excited to get to work. And so am I, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to be able to, you know, put in a lot of work with a familiar face and with a group, uh, a really good group of guys. Yeah. Really excited to see what you guys are, uh, what you guys can do this uh, upcoming season. Um, so, Shaq, I have a question, just kind of a positional question on on linebacker. Um, okay. You know, I played, uh, you know, high school football. I played on the offensive line, so I always kind of thought that you know a center was kind of the quarterback of the offensive line. Mm -hmm. And you know, to me, on defense, the 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 linebacker, you know, middle linebacker is kind of in my mind the uh, the quarterback of the defense. Would you say that that holds true? I definitely think so. I definitely think so. You know, your your Mike linebacker traditionally and usually, you know, just a guy really you know, dictating what the plan is for the defense, you know, from the front to the back, from corner to corner, you know, it's just always, the mic is always the focal point. Okay. Now, 
with you know Joe Cullen, he he mentioned um, defensive coordinator for the Jags that uh, he is entertaining you know maybe trying out the three four you know Jacksonville has traditionally played the the, the four three you know mm-hmm. as as a middle linebacker does that change at all you know your roles because I know it does with you know uh, defensive ends they kind of they kind of switch to being an outside linebacker going from that yeah. you know three point stance to the two point stance. Yeah, um, it changes the task for the fact, like you said, we have one linebacker that turns into an outside linebacker, and you really get two middle uh, or two inside linebackers in that type of package. Um, but I mean, depending on who you ask, it makes it it makes it easier for the linebacker. Now you know you can play faster. You know you got guys that are holding up certain gaps and things of that nature. But it's different types of uh, uh, three four packages. It's different ways to play it. You know, on any given play, you know, a lot of three, four packages come with a, a instant stunt or a call stunt um, every play. So the gaps can get a little funky depending on the offense. But, um, no, nah, I like it. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, do you have more experience playing in the tradition, like in the four, in the four, three or, or, For sure. okay, gotcha. Okay. For sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, Obviously, Shaq, you had a, a huge role on special teams last last season. Um, you know, I was just kind of curious after the 2020 season when you kind of reflect on things, was there was there one particular thing that you took away, like the most important thing you learned during your rookie season? Uh, the most important thing I learned, definitely, I would definitely say, the one thing I took away, the one day give uh, takeaway was the you have to stay ready. You yeah. know, you have to stay ready in this league. You know, and it's so important because you're at a you're at a place where the margin for error is so small. You know, and and the margin for opportunity is even smaller at some at some points. You know, so whenever you get your chance, you have to be ready. And you never know, you being ready can turn into a whole different type of role or a whole different type of you know dynamic. So I love it, man. It's it's all about accountability. And yeah, looking back at the, my my rookie season, it's about just keeping at it every day, every day, you know, without the structure that college gives you, you know, that you could be used to, you know, just as a rookie, I learned a lot about the business side of the league and definitely just staying ready, being a pro, as we should say. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> On a lighter note, um, <laughs> you know, you watch uh, these shows like Inside the, um, you know, Hard Knocks rather, or like, you know, um, you know, these these kind of documentary shows on, on football teams. Um, I was just kind of curious, you see like a lot of uh, pranks that are, are pulled on the rookies, the incoming rookies. And I was just kind of curious, did any of the, the vets, you know, pull any pranks on uh, on you or was there one that was memorable? Pranks? Uh, we have we were blessed with some good vests, some old savvy vests. <laughs> <laughs> so pranks, we didn't really get too many of those. I I can't say, but in terms of like like duties and chores, for sure, Miles made sure if he could just think of something and say, yeah, "I need you to go grab that before we get on the plane," and we got to get on the plane about an hour or two, you know. Yeah. So stuff like that was real. It was funny to me just how watching the vests use they a veteran uh, uh, leverage on us. I think that's funny, but not too many pranks. All right. Um, So last question, Shaq, Um, you know, what was your most, what would you say your most memorable moment was uh, last season? The most memorable, probably the first game, my first ever NFL game, running out of that tunnel, um, being in the action for the first time and really realizing, you know, that I could play in this league for a long time, yeah. honestly. Telling myself that and realizing that within myself, I said, oh, yeah, this is this is really what I've been waiting for. You know, I'm just staying ready and ready to take off. Awesome, man. Well, hey, Shaq, uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And um, we're happy to have you. Best of luck uh, for the upcoming season. And uh, I'll be rooting for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let me get that. Coming up with the big set. Quarterbacks be where we on the prowl. Game day, night, you could hear it in our ground. Intimidation on to keep their hearts racing. Eating other teams live on TV front of the nation. Spectacular defensive scheme.
This episode is available on the Jaguar Podcast YouTube channel. So if you stop by, make sure to subscribe and give this video a like. Also, these episodes are available on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and other major podcast distributors as well. So if you don't mind, please leave me a review and some feedback. I'd really appreciate that. If you'd like to connect with me on social media, my Twitter handle is at Jaguar Podcast. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. This is Andrew signing off. Cheers. Cheers.